welcome to the second season of Let's Talk Health. I am your host, Teddy Manuel. I'm a naturopathic physician with me, my co-host, Desiree Edwards. Desiree is a graduate of the Edna Manley School of Performing and Visual Arts here in Jamaica. Here we are in a beautiful Shaw Park Gardens in Ocherist, Jamaica. Ted, it's really great to be here. Being here, being a part of this program that deals with health issues and looks at things from a natural perspective. Great to be a part of it this year. Okay, well, let's go up and meet Dr. Green and the audience. Let's go, let's go meet them. Welcome back to the second season of Let's Talk Health. I am your host, Teddy Manuel, my co-host, Desiree Edwards, and Dr. Arthur Green. On today's show, we'll be looking at liver cancer and also HTLV-1. You will be hearing after the break of two gentlemen who had amazing stories. One who had liver cancer and was only given weeks to live. The second gentleman had the deadly virus HTLV1 and he was able to eradicate it naturally. You will hear more when we come back. You're watching Let's Talk Health with Teddy Manuel. Talk Health with Teddy Manuel. I'm your co-host Desiree Edwards and with us we have Dr. Arthur Green and also two guests Mr. Anthony Barrett and also Mr. Glenroy Samuels. Now earlier on in the show we heard about two gentlemen who corrected and eradicated liver cancer and also HTLV1 the virus. But before we go into any detail with the guests I would like for Dr. Arthur Green to explain to us and everyone at home exactly what these two conditions and virus is all about. The liver is the, one of the largest organs in the human body and it performs over 500 functions and it is essentially essential for life so life is impossible without the liver at optimal function. Now the liver is at the gateway to the digestive system and so the first pass of blood and nutrients that leave the digestive system must pass through the liver, which is, to put it simply, the factory that will assimilate, analyze, detoxify, and make sure that we get the proper nourishment that is compatible with life. Now, there are several different um, conditions that mm. could affect the liver. And Aside from liver cancer, which we'll be zooming on, other common conditions that you know about would be conditions such as hepatitis, mm. which is inflammation of the liver caused by viruses, typically hepatitis B and hepatitis C. Hepatitis B, as you know, can be sexually transmitted as well. Mm -hmm. Other common conditions that we know about is cirrhosis. I think everybody is familiar with that one and that Alcohol ingestion has a big contribution towards that condition. And that is very, very fairly common. Now, as regards cancer of the liver, cancer of the liver can be primary, meaning that the cancer originated in the liver itself, the organ itself, or it could be secondary, known as metastases, where the cancer spread from another organ to the liver. Mm -hmm. And remember I said it was the gateway. So anything from the esophagus down to the stomach, duodenum, the colon, any cancers in those areas could easily spread to the liver. Can you also explain to us um, about the HTLV-1 virus? Uh, HTLV-1, human T-cell leukemia virus types 1 and 2, belongs to a group of viruses known as the retrovirus. 
In this group of virus, we also find the HIV, the infamous HIV, or the AIDS virus, really? is in this category as well. Okay. Now, whereas the HIV virus is known as a lympholytic virus, meaning that it breaks down the white blood cells, the HTLV-1 is actually a lymphotrophic virus, meaning mm. that it causes the cells to multiply or replicate out of control. And that's why it can lead to cancer known as oncogenesis, where they give rise to cancer. So this HTLV-1 is very popular in the Caribbean, including Jamaica, southern Japan, and the southeastern part of the United States of America as well. Now, so we are actually an endemic area, meaning it exists here naturally. The thing with HTLV-1 is that many of us may have the condition, but it's a virus that is mainly dormant. Mm. So you will have it, and you don't know that you have right. it. But it can be passed on by sexual transmission, by blood transfusion, by drug users who share needles, and by vertical transmission from mother to child via breastfeeding. So this HTLV-1 can cause what is known as ATLL, which is the adult onset of the lymphatic leukemia. Right. And as well, it can cause another condition, which is what we tend to encounter here in the Caribbean, what is known as tropical spastic paresis or tropical spastic paraplegia. Now, this is the thing. And in Japan, they refer to it as the HTLV1-associated myelopathy. Now, these are the conditions that affect the nervous system and results in paresis, weakness, spastic stiffness of the joints, limbs, aches and pains. Mm -hmm. And it's more common in women than men. And oftentimes, this condition, if it's not thought about, could be misdiagnosed. Okay, excellent. Okay, very, very, very thorough information and explanation for us. Now, Mr. Anthony Barrett, we'd yeah. love to hear from you. Can you please explain to us exactly what happened from start to finish? My name is Tony Barrett from Port Moran, St. Thomas. And this, it started out, I wasn't feeling well one day, I didn't have lunch. Mm -hmm. And from there on, a few days I just didn't feel well at all. I went to the doctor and he said, I have John D's and I should take an ultrasound, get an ultrasound done by the very next day. And I did. And the ultrasound revealed that there was two tumors on the liver. Wow. Two days later, I had the doctor to read the report. And that's when he said, I need to do an operation immediately. But before I do, I should take some more tests. So I went to Apex Medical Center, mm -hmm. where I do some more tests, same results. I went to Dr. Pee Wee Fraser's office, where I do some O-ring tests, same results, that there was two tumors on the liver. Dr. Fraser was out of the country at the time. Was he the surgeon, Dr. Fraser? Yes, he's a surgeon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, he referred me to a surgeon in Mexico, an oncologist mm -hmm. in Mexico that I should go and see. But I wanted to go to Cuba. So I sent in my results to the Cuban embassy and waiting for an answer to go to Cuba. When a friend of mine from named Kingsley Wright from Pennsylvania called me and told me about a friend who know Dr. Emmanuel. So you get a call all the way from Pennsylvania in America? Yes. About Dr. Ted Emmanuel? Yes. Okay. I called him, I called his office, and Miss Jackie answered, and right, I told her my problem, and right away she said, you can get better. Well, I went in the very next day to see Mr. Emmanuel mm -hmm. and told him what the doctor said, how serious it was, and how I only have three or four weeks to live, so I should go and do an operation immediately. Mm -hmm. 
and they call uh, the hospital, make appointment for me to go to the hospital where I should do the operation. But I didn't want to do that. So I spent the next week home before I hear and from And what happened Kingsley. while you were um, speaking to Mr. Emmanuel? What did he say to you? Well, when I went to Mr. Emmanuel, I didn't speak to him on the phone. I spoke to him directly. In at person? His office, yes. Okay, good. And he said, I can get better. It's a form I have to sign. I was reluctant signing the form. So he said, if you want to get better, hurry up and sign this form so we can move on. <laughs> well, I did. He spoke to me for about 45 minutes. And after that 45 minutes, trust me, I felt better. <laughs> <laughs> Just by talking to you, I felt much better. Oh, what was he telling you that made you feel so much better? <laughs> <laughs> he was telling me that he cannot help me. And no doctor can. Mm -hmm. He said, but you can get help. It's all up to you and your God. Well, from there on, he let me know exactly what's wrong with me and let me know I didn't have to do an operation. And these cancerous tumors, they can go away mm -hmm. without an operation. I was so happy because I'm just not into that operation stay. Well, he put me on his program. And I was on the program, all herbal, organic food, herbal pills and after I worked with him for two and a half weeks my friends and family everybody wanted me most of my relatives they didn't want me to deal with Mr. Emmanuel <laughs> because they did this herbal thing they don't understand it okay. <laughs> and they didn't want me to work with him well anyway I didn't want to work with the other doctors. You wanted to work? With okay. Mr. Okay. Emmanuel. Well, after two weeks, two and a half weeks to be exact, and his program, mm -hmm. I went back to take, I went to take a needle biopsy this time because everybody wanted to know exactly what was inside and what was happening. Mm -hmm. And when I went back to, when I went for the needle biopsy and they do the ultrasound, they say it was gone. What? It was nothing there. After two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks to be exact, those two tumors was gone. Okay. We've heard from Mr. Anthony Barrett. Now I just want to hear now from Mr. Glenroy Samrose everything that happened with you. Okay, I'm Glenroy Samuels. I'm a musician with Fab Five for over 10 years. And you know, it's, it's a fun job. Anyway, I'm a blood donor for years. I just get up one day and just walk to the blood bank for no special reason. But on this particular day, I went to the blood bank to donate some blood and they told me they can't take any blood from it. Again, I said, why? You know, they didn't want to tell me exactly what is the problem right there and then. So the lady went, and shortly after the doctor came, I need to sit and see, see her in her in her office, which I did. I went there and closed the door, sat me down quietly, started telling me that, you know, all of these nice things before breaking the news to me. You now you're diagnosed with HDLV. What? and start explaining to me what is HDLV. But that wasn't the, 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 the problem. It, it, it when she said, there's no cure, and there's no treatment. There are no treatments anywhere. Well, but we can give you a letter to go by University Hospital for counseling and further testing, which I did. And you know, they draw blood and the whole works, start telling me how many people is infected with this virus. And we are the different countries that people are affected with it. So, you know, after that, I called my doctor, my personal doctor, and, and said that 
you know, um, have you ever heard of anything called HTLV1? said, yeah, I just had a patient die, die, die from it. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> so right away, you know. So you had it? You, you have it? I said, yeah. And she, oh my god, you know. No, she innocently, her outburst like that, you know, not knowing I was having that problem. So going to the university hospital for counseling and all of this. Then one, I mean, almost give up on life. So one day, I was passing by CVM, and I went inside and asked, you know, I saw this doctor on television a couple of weeks ago, you know, about natural herb, and right away the lady gave me, gave me the number, and I called, and I spoke to Mrs. Fassage, and made an appointment, and when I went in, before I, I, I went to Mr. Manuel, I went on the, on the net and did a read up on this particular thing. Download, no, you don't want to read, you don't want to see what was there, what, what I was going through. After hearing what my doctor told me and saw what was in that, in, in black and white, you know, it was very, it was horrifying for me. So, went to the, Mr. Emmanuel, gave him the, the document that I, I, I printed, and he read it. And, you know, as I said, <laughs> he spoke to you for 45 minutes. <laughs> he spoke to me for about a whole and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it was really, you know, it's like feeling well right after. But before I went to the blood bank, I was feeling all these pain. You know, I was a, a lot of joint pain. I was slow down. It's like taking a pen from a pocket. It was like taking a little while to do it because I was on a lot of pain. You know, but even though I still wanted to give my local blood donation, you know, to help whoever it can. And so Mr. Emmanuel did his read up on what I gave him, then called a friend in Canada and asked him about this thing. And, you know, hearing the conversation on the speakerphone back and forth, you know, helped me because I heard when the, the gentleman said, yes, ma'am, we can box for that man, which right away, you know, I start feeling this hope, you know, mm. that was nowhere. And, you know, then he gave me a list of things, natural product, organic stuff that I should buy. And I must say that a, a lot of it was, was mainly Japanese treatment, you know, and it's amaz amazing to see how, you know, after a couple of weeks, I start feeling different. Then one day, you know, because I you know I keep going back to the university hospital. So they called me one day. I said I need to come come in and do another test, which I went in and did again. And then I got this phone call one day in about November, early November last year. Um, Mr. Samuels, we we've got back your your result for the HTLV, but your HIV is inconclusive. No, you don't know how I felt when I heard that news. The lady hung up the phone and I almost went through the, the roof. So when she called bed. you back, sorry, Glenn Roy, she said to you that the HTLV came back in con um, um, the, 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 the result came back positive and um, negative. So there was no more HTLV. There was no more HTLV, okay. but the HIV is inconclusive. Right. But you know, I didn't worry about the HIV because I know I'm not HIV right. positive. So hung up the phone calmly, but as soon as that phone was hung up, <laughs> I reeled so high, you know, I thought I was going to the roof, and I was saying, yes, yes, mm -hmm. and I was crying and carrying on, you know, and the helper at my workplace was wondering what was happening to me. So I called Mr. Emmanuel right away and said, you know, they called me from the university hospital and saying that the HTLV is gone and you need to come back in for the HTLV, you know, and I was saying, I'm not going back, you know, <laughs> not going back, and I went, went up to him and he, so you need to go back to do this test again. So they called me again on another day. Mr. Samuel, you need to come in for the retesting again, which Mr. Emmanuel encouraged me again, go, go. I did the test again for the HIV. And then I got the call again. Mr. Samuel, you're OK. Mm -hmm. and excellent, excellent. You don't know the burden that, you know, that, that came off of my shoulder during this ordeal. 
And, and I, I, the, the treatment I did was uh, the span of four months. And matter of fact, I'm still doing it today. You know, add my regular food, no meat, no oil, etc. Et you know, which is I'm wonderful. It's excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, people at home, you've heard firsthand from Mr. Anthony Barrett, who once had liver cancer, and also from Mr. Glenworth Samuels, who has the deadly virus, HTLV1. When we come back, we'll be hearing in more detail from Mr. Emmanuel and also from Dr. Arthur Green, who will explain on both ends their perspectives. Join us after the break.